Hi guys, it's April and welcome back to my channel, The Homemaking Bella. Today I am not going to do the in-person intro. I am going to skip right into the purpose of your visit. So this week I've been focusing on the various documentation that you receive as you get ready for your new home build. On Tuesday, I showed you guys the My True Connect website, which contains all of the various information that you'll need over your several month journey into home building. Today, Thursday, January 27th, I'm going to show you guys what exactly an options manual looks like and then how I utilize this. So as soon as you sign the contract for your home, we did ours on August 7th or August 10th, I apologize, you begin to receive new material that helps you make the various selections that you will need in order to design your home the way you want it. I loved having early access to this document because it allowed me to see the price of everything before I was, I was going to the showroom. I actually had about a month to look at this document, go over the things that I want, look at the images to really see what matched up with my ideal home and also my ideal budget very very important this options manual actually has a complimentary tab in the my true connect um, account that i will show you guys and it shows you pictures of the items listed here so just in case you don't know what it is um, that's listed you can um, actually see what you may or may not be refusing so I just wanted to show you um, what I'm looking at. So our model is a Devon. The style is an Elements. It's part of the Elements collection. Um, so True Homes has four different collection styles, I believe, and they each have some varying level of service or um, extras included, etc. And then this is the approximate square footage. We chose to add on an extra room. So our square footage actually increased, but that's what this number is behind here. And this is the date that we received this manual, August 11th. Our showroom appointment was September 7th. I believe I'm remembering that correctly. So like I said, we had almost a month with this particular document. And I'm gonna zoom in just so you can really see what exactly we're looking at. Um, so everything is optional when you're building a new home. Um, if you didn't know, now you know. So things like tapering the parking pad, which means that you are flattening down the bottom of the driveway so that you don't have to come up a little curb every time you come home, 895 extra dollars. If you are somebody who doesn't want to have to consistently worry about watering the grass, you can you can put in an irrigation system. Just know that's going to cost you $8,700 for all four zones in North Carolina. Now, that's what the NC is. In South Carolina, it's only $4,700. So, very interesting. I assume maybe it has something to do with the type of soil in each area. I have no idea. If you were to add a window, $300 for each window. If you were to add a side door into the garage, $540. Everything is optional. Um, yeah, so there were lots of things that we did and then there were lots of things that we chose not to do because we can do them a bit later. We did choose to go ahead and add a six foot sliding door um, with, with no grids in the window. So the six foot sliding door, full view clear. This is an RFP and that means request for price. This means that this depends on the home style that you choose. And then also if this item is even available for your house. We did have to request for the price. It was approximately $1,200, I believe. I could be wrong. I will check in on that later. You could add a deck. Again, as you can see, $5,300. We chose not to add any deck or any other exterior material um, at all. We did choose to upgrade the kitchen layout. That's why this is highlighted. So as you can see, the alternate kitchen layout was $500, but this helped us keep our floor plan feel really open. Um, it maximized our space, in my opinion. Otherwise, there would have been a wall um, and it would have, it just would not have looked as great. And I'll see if I can find um, a picture or a video at some point later on to show you guys the difference between the optional kitchen and um, the kitchen that is standard. 
You could choose to extend the owner's bedroom and that's how much all of that will cost. But I'm just gonna go through and show you the things that we actually um, chose to go ahead and upgrade with. We did choose to add the optional bonus room and we chose to finish it. That was an additional $9,900. The reason why we did that is because we were planning to utilize this as an extra bedroom to take our home from a three bedroom house to a four bedroom home. And the optional bonus room is almost the exact same size as the master bedroom. This will allow us to have two master bedroom size rooms for a fraction of the cost of buying a four bedroom home. So for me, the $9,900 for the bonus room was absolutely worth it. You can extend the size of your garage. You can upgrade to a three car garage. We only have two cars, so it was completely unnecessary for us to upgrade to the three car garage. Um, we did choose to keep the nine, nine feet first floors and eight feet second floors instead of upgrading the second floor to nine feet ceilings because that was just a an expense that we didn't really need in my opinion. Um, we did choose to upgrade the electrical package in the kitchen. Um, as you can see, that was a total of $1,350. This is just about how the, the types of lights that you have in the kitchen, that's what this is. We did not upgrade the individual light bulbs. We did choose to add some recessed lighting just to increase the amount of light in the home at night. We did choose to spend um, $95 twice for the, the, the hardware for the garage door. Um, it just, it looked better in my opinion. And hopefully you guys will agree when you see the turnout um, and what that looks like. The kitchen is really where I wanted to spend most of my money um, because the kitchen is the heart of the home. And so that's what we did. In the kitchen, we spent $170 on the under the cabinet light strip. We spent $50, or I wanted to spend, let me say $50 on the tilt out sink tray. But unfortunately, I also chose to go with an apron sink and that meant that I could not get the tilt out sink tray. So this is highlighted, but we actually did not receive that. Um, there were rollout shelves and I was really very into that idea. So I put four of those in a side cabinet attached to the, um, it's kind of like gonna serve as our pantry. And those were $75 each. We did choose to upgrade to the two drawer pots and pan drawer for $270. And instead of getting the base spice rollout for $290, we actually also added the three drawer pots and pans for $265. Um, just a better value in my opinion. We did add the tray dividers and the tray base just to keep our kitchen trays organized. So I'm really excited about that. Um, for our backsplash, we didn't pay anything extra for that. We chose a level four tile, um, which was a white subway tile, which was my ideal. And so that is what I got. Very excited about that. Um, the kitchen cabinets, we chose to go for a straight look instead of a staggered look, and that was an extra $250. The countertop, we only chose a level one because the counter type that I wanted was available in a level one, and so I didn't actually have to spend any money there. I did choose to upgrade the um, kitchen sink, and that was $780. Um, worth it for me might not be worth it for you I chose the stainless steel um, option the porcelain farm sink as you can see as an additional well is eleven hundred dollars not an additional eleven hundred dollars um, we did not upgrade to the kitchen sink this was $220 and the reason why I chose not to upgrade the kitchen sink um, is because this sink this faucet, should I say? I'm sorry. We did not upgrade the kitchen faucet, which would have been $220 for the one that I wanted. But the reason why I chose not to do that is because this is not a smart faucet. It literally only improves the look of the space. I found a smart faucet at Home Depot, the kind that responds to your voice and your hand, so you don't actually have to touch it um, if your hands are messy or something like that, for $390. And for me, the difference of $170 is worth it to be able to have a smart faucet um, as opposed to a faucet that doesn't do anything but does improve the look of the kitchen. We did choose to go ahead and upgrade to the soap dispenser attached to the side of the sink. That is $95. Although I might replace it with a, um, a glass washer, 
um, at some point. But I did like the idea of having a built-in soap dispenser, so I do not have to keep dish soap sitting out on the counter because our our sink is actually in the island. It is not in the um, countertops that are attached to the wall. I didn't want stuff sitting in the middle of the island like that. We did not upgrade any of the appliances and the reason for that is because um, we already have a very nice Samsung refrigerator. The um, appliances that they have are all Whirlpool. I have no intention of keeping them. I actually plan on selling them and then, well, not then, but I will purchase matching appliances for the very nice Samsung refrigerator that I already have, um, a new stove and a new dishwasher and a new microwave. And I will sell the appliances that come with the house because once you purchase the house, those appliances, <coughs> excuse me, those appliances are yours. Also didn't have to do anything with the washer and dryer. We already have a washer and dryer, but please note that the washer and dryers are not included with your home. You actually, you get the appliances in the kitchen. So a refrigerator, a stove, um, or an oven, a microwave, and then also the dishwasher, but you do not get the laundry room appliances. We upgraded absolutely none of the lights. None of the lights in the showroom appealed to me. None of the lights in the pictures appealed to me. And again, overall, it was just gonna be much more expensive to replace these, I mean, much more expensive to upgrade these lights using the build a great material than it would be to purchase my own lights. So for example, this dining room light here, $565. That is excessive. That's excessive for a light, especially one that you could probably find for much cheaper in one of the big box stores or on Amazon or even on builder grade websites actually, which is something that maybe you don't know. We as regular people have access to builder grade websites and you can find the same things that they're selling for much cheaper. You would just have to find somebody to install. I guess you're also paying for the luxury of having it installed, but after we've built the home and I've changed out all of the lighting in the house because we chose all builder grade lighting and none of it is being kept, I will give you guys the total of how much it would have been to have fancy lights installed by the builders as compared to how much it was to do it ourselves. So we're gonna smooth past this lighting section. Still going, still going, because lighting was huge. Um, I did choose to upgrade the carpet pad over the whole house to a level two carpet pad. That was $775 worth it for me, just to make the, the carpeting a little bit firmer. It'll hold up to traction a little bit better. However, I do also wanna note that I do not actually plan to keep the carpet in the areas where carpeting exists. It was just cheaper for me to once again do this somewhere else. Please remember that everything that you add on the showroom floor goes on to your mortgage unless you can pay it off at the showroom at that time. And I did not want to add anything onto the mortgage, so I made sure that the things that I was adding on to my home were things that could be covered um, at the time of the showroom appointment. I did, however, choose to upgrade the flooring in the first floor common areas, which were the foyer, the kitchen, the powder room, the garage, the great room and the dining room, the garage entryway. The great room and the dining room, I did choose to upgrade those to a sustainable wood laminate, um, and that was $1,750. Everything upstairs is carpeted and the master bath bedroom, which is downstairs, is also carpeted. At some point in the next two years, I plan to replace this carpeting with um, another wood laminate or preferably a true hardwood, but we will see how that goes. Um, in the upstairs bathroom, which is the second bath, I did choose to upgrade the tile. Um, I went with a Cabo Gray, which is very pretty, only $75, so 100% worth it for me. And then I also chose, this isn't listed here, but they might tell you this um, when you get to the showroom, depending on the type of tile that you choose, you can change the way that the tile is laid out on the floor. Previously, they were gonna lay it diagonally. The Cabo Gray tile comes in large enough tiles where you can do like a bricklayer's pattern. So I chose to do that with the pattern 
instead of letting it be a diagonal, diagonally placed. So sorry. Um, I didn't change flooring anywhere else except for in the owner's bath. I did choose to upgrade the owner's bath flooring to a um, Anthem 12 by 12 gray for $100. Worth it again. I didn't do anything in the owner's bedroom. Um, nothing. Didn't, this is all flooring options. So if we had done it individually, for example, so say you only wanted to upgrade the flooring in the owner's bedroom, $1,545. This is why I decided not to. It just was not worth the money for me when I could get sustainable wood laminate myself for cheaper or a hardwood laminate a few years down the line also for cheaper. We didn't change the flooring in the water heater closet because why? Nobody's going in there. Um, although at some point we do have an idea to transition to a tankless water heater and then we will use that closet for something else. The space is really small so it won't cost us too much to pull up the the flooring that's currently there and replace it because the only optional the only option for upgrade was vinyl and I'm not that attached to it. Every laundry room comes with a folding table. I actually hate built-in folding tables. I'm trying to learn how to love it, but I hate them. Couldn't get rid of it. I asked if they could remove it, um, but because it comes with a plan and it doesn't cost them anything, they were not willing to um, remove it. So I am living with that. Um, I chose not to get upper laundry cabinets because again, I found this cost excessive. $325 here, $375 for this. When you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and you can purchase the same upper laundry cabinets yourself. So even though, and I just want to make a note that even though I am purchasing a new build, custom built home, nothing says that you have to complete all of the additions or all of the things that you want on your house at the time of purchase. That's something that you can choose to do, but for myself, it just wasn't financial financially um, smart. Was it necessary? We didn't do any upgrades in the owner's bath and that is because they didn't offer us anything that we actually wanted. The one thing that I wanted to have in the master bedroom was a standalone tub. That was not an option for my house from the builder directly because my home does not have a basement and the only standalone tubs that True Homes will do in our neighborhood are the ones that um, can like sink into a basement area. So again, this is another project that I'm gonna be tackling. I will be replacing the master bathtub with a, um, a ooh, didn't mean to make it bigger, sorry, with a standalone tub at some point in time. Because I did not replace the standalone tub, I did choose not to um, do the towel surround. However, we did upgrade the, the bath situation to a garden tub. The previous option was just a shower, um, a shower stall and no tub. And I would prefer to have a tub over just a shower. The tub comes with the shower and so we made that choice. Um, I did choose to upgrade the vanity in the owner's bath. Um, it comes with a cabinet that's hardgrove. I wanted the terrain style, and I also wanted to paint it onyx, which is a really deep dark black, obviously. That was $225. We also chose, I don't know if you can see this here, um, the included feature top was Venetian marble, so I just decided not to upgrade that because it's already marble, and I wanted a white top with a black bottom, and that's what I got. And then I upgraded the bath toilet to a comfort level that is not on there but i did do that comfort height toilet and i did upgrade it's not there um i made no upgrades sorry in the second floor bathroom except for the flooring because again i actually plan on ripping out the upstairs sink i do not like it i don't want it um so i'm gonna rip that out and i already found one or something that was much cheaper, in my opinion, um, than this option. And then I'll probably be a lot happier with. Um, it just matches my vision more than what was being offered to us at the showroom. I also didn't do anything with the faucets in the second floor bathroom because again, all of this I plan on um, changing. And so it just wasn't worth it for me to pay for something that I'm going to change anyway. Um, shower rods are not included. You can pay for them. I chose not to do that because I can purchase a shower rod for cheaper than $85. Um, for example, 
So as you can see, there are lots of options here. I didn't do anything in the powder room. I have a big master plan for the powder room that involves wallpaper, changing out the sink completely, and adding a frame to the mirror that is included with the home. Um, and I'm gonna do that myself. I didn't choose to upgrade the door hardware because it was going to be more expensive. We have 10 doors in our home. Fine with that, that's great, that's amazing. Very excited about them. Actually, we have more than 10 doors if you include the closet doors, the non-locking doors. To upgrade the hardware for every door in the home to the knob that I actually like, the Latitude Lever knob, um, it would have been $1,315 an excessive amount of money. Those knobs, I found them online myself, they are $27. $27 for 10 doors is nowhere near $1,315. I chose not to pay that and just to purchase the knobs myself. Um, in fact, it one of the big reasons why I didn't upgrade the door hardware was because it was cheaper for me to literally upgrade the doors to the style that I wanted than it was to add the hardware. But this is how they actually show them together in the model home. They put the upgraded interior doors with the latitude lever. And so you fall in love with that combination. And then you get to the showroom and they tell you the only way you can get that combination is if you spend $1,800. I'm not going to do that. So I chose to spend the $500 to upgrade the doors and $27 for each doorknob to upgrade the doorknobs myself. The trim details are like crown molding and things like that. Chose not to do that. Wanted none of that. I didn't want any wainscoting. I didn't need to upgrade um, the window trim if the trim was already drywall wrapped. I did choose to um, stain the banister, the stairs, to match the island. So that was $400 and I did choose to upgrade to a specific style, style G, which I believe I showed you guys in the um, previous video from this week on Tuesday. <clears throat> I didn't choose to do a two-tone interior paint because again, it's just cheaper for me to paint a house by myself, um, especially because I don't want my whole house to be the same color. Um, the main level with the open floor plan between the kitchen, the dining room, and the living area, 100%, that should all be the same color. But I do plan on doing some feature walls, some wallpaper. So for me, this was not a choice that worked for me. However, if you wanted to, you could choose to have them upgrade to painted. You could also um, upgrade the doors so that they were painted. Um, again, I chose not to do that because that's just not my style. I did not upgrade to any of their optional electronic deadbolts because I have a Google smart home system and their um, electronic deadbolts were from Schlage, which is a doorknob company. Um, and actually they do make the doorknobs that I like, but I would like to keep all of my electronic smart home appliances attached to the same company just for my convenience. Um, so I didn't upgrade to the electronic door, door deadbolt, wow, even though it would have been cheaper. They also didn't actually have the color that I wanted um, for the deadbolt, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. I did choose to upgrade the front door um, from a six panel door to a three, a three panel craftsman door. That was $2.95, very happy with that. I didn't add any of the side lights. I do not like it when people can see into my house from the front door that just eliminates, you know, the privacy of a front home for me. And that's not, you know, that's not something that I would ever want for myself. And those are all the options. So as you can see, the pricing manual is actually pretty great. It really helps you to make decisions and to get ready for how much money you will need to have when you go into the showroom. Again, I had a month to prepare from the time between receiving this and the time from actually going into the showroom. So that was a month for me to get ready for how much money that I was going to spend, how much money I was okay with spending. Hopefully in your building process, you are able to have that same luxury. I'm going to show you guys what the corresponding images look like on the My True Connect site now, so you can understand how I used these or those two things, the option manual and the images on the True Connect site together to actually make my choices. 
So this tab was also found in the My True Connect Home page. I did not show you guys this yesterday because it more closely aligned with what I wanted to show you guys today in terms of the option manual. This was actually updated after my design appointment. My design appointment was September 7th and this was updated October 29th. So that means that there are things in here that I actually didn't have access to at the time of my visit so let's see if there's anything in, in particular that sticks out to me so again if you were to compare and contrast the option manual which I just showed you to this page you could see your options before you actually go into the um, design studio you're not gonna be able to see everything but you will be able to get a pretty good glimpse of most things so for example I already told you guys I chose a level 4 backsplash um, for my kitchen and I chose a white subway towel level four everything up to level four was included But these are the options as you can see. So this is a backsplash level one This is the style a Toledo. These are the colors and this is the size of the tile That's humongous a 13 by 13 square on your kitchen wall This is a floor tile to me specifically um, again, the level two backsplash, this is Cabo, and it was 13 by 13. Um, and again, this is a floor towel. And in fact, I actually used the color Shore as my upstairs bathroom tile on the floor. And then also in backsplash level two is the, the Anthem tile in white. Backsplash level three is still another 13 by 13 tile. It's prettier, I will give them that, but it was again, not for me. Backsplash level four is where the tiles get a little bit smaller and they really give me the look that I was going for. So they had the catch option in a three by six and these tiles could be either gloss or matte. Um, the colors are more varied to help you pick and choose what exactly it is that you want to see in your home. So this is the shape of a subway tile. That's what that three by six is. It's approximately the size of an index card. And we chose the color Fawn, which is this grayish tan color here for the backsplash. Very excited about how that's going to look. You can also see the tile colors that are more expensive. Um, again, this is just a, this is the same as the level four, but the sizes are different as you can see here. And then the level six is a little bit different this is an option to herringbone your backsplash and so they would be the size one by three which you can see here and then this is the color of the tile over here decided this wasn't for me again another way that you could have um, aligned these these one by three tiles in this style and then also a smaller version of the catch tile a larger version of the Rhapsody tile here, and then a bevel. Lots of backsplash options. None of it was for me at all. I was very happy with my subway tile because that was what I wanted. But I did want you guys to see how many options there are and how far up you can go in terms of expenditure. Then for example, the faucets, here you can see all of the faucets and soap dispensers were by Moen and they do depend on the type of countertop that you have. We have a quartz countertop and then they give you the options for the finishes. Initially I was looking at a matte black. I actually transitioned over to an oil rubbed bronze because I like the way it looks better. And these are the two sinks that you could have upgraded to. These are both upgrades. The standard faucet is a silver nickel and that's what's gonna be installed initially in my home. I will be purchasing the upgraded faucet before, like that's gonna be fixed ASAP. We did choose to go for the coordinating soap dispenser um, just because I want a soap dispenser and I will be purchasing an oil rubbed bronze uh, faucet, sorry, myself. The cabinet hardware is optional for some builds. It was not optional for mine. This was actually included. I'm not going to show you what's in there because there are so many options. Um, another place where I might go is lighting. So you can see 
So the lighting options do depend on the level of your home. So again, in the first section of this video, I told you that True Homes has different styles of homes. They have um, their Integrity and Tribute Classic collection, and then they have their Elements collection, and this is the, the area that my home would fall into. And then they have their Traditions, tri Tribute, Premiere, and Legacy collections, um, style lighting, and then upgrade options for those homes. So you can see the, I would click on this, but you're not gonna be able to see it. Um, but you can see the different types of standard lighting. So like, for example, this is a standard light. This will probably be the dining room light that's installed in the home before I switch it out. And then they'll give you the upgrade options in this space here. And the upgrade options can be classified in numerous ways. You can do the transitional lighting, the craftsman options, the upgrades that are classic, etc. The pendant lights are the ones that hang over the island and I liked none of those. I've already purchased my own. They just need to be installed by somebody. You could, so, you could also look at the bathtubs and the shower options. So you can see the difference between a tub shower that comes as a unit and then a tub shower that has a tile surround. Um, and then you could see this is for just like the standard upstairs bathroom. And then this is what it would look like for the master bathroom. Or if you chose to do a garden tub in either of those areas. These are the shower options here. And then this is for the master bedroom if you have both the shower and the tub. None of these were screaming amazing for me, and that's why I will be having this done myself at another opportunity. So I just wanted to, I really wanted to give you guys just an idea of what this space looks like. So these are the interior door styles. Um, the door we chose was an upgrade. Every other type of door was not. The two panel arch here, the two panel square and the six panel, all standard door frames. The Riverside five panel is the only one that's an upgrade. I did choose to go ahead and do that. If you wanted a barn door for whatever reason, that was always an option for you. I did not want a barn door at that moment. Um, and then also if you wanted to add a window, this is what that looked like for you. If you were somebody like me who wanted to do something with the stair railings, these were your options. I did choose to upgrade my stair railing to a G, which is this guy down here with the, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, I chose to upgrade to a G. So the plain straight iron bars, and then we're gonna stain this section to a an onyx so that it better matches the island. I am very excited about the way that that's going to look. It's very classic for me. But again, so many options. You could also see the exterior color options here. Our home does have siding. Um, there is actually a, a folder, not a folder, but a, a brochure essentially that they give you. So even though they're not, uh, maybe this is what they changed in, in October, because when I was looking at this website in August, I could actually see the colors on this site um, and they don't have them up here anymore. If you wanted to do brick or stone, the options for those colors would also be in this area, as you can see here. Any changes that you wanna make to the garage door. So for instance, we did choose to go ahead and add on to our garage door. I'm not seeing those there either. So maybe that's no longer an option, um, but the optional hardware on the garage door that we added was in this space. And then any changes to the exterior doors you could find here as well. So again, we chose to upgrade to the three panel Craftsman, which is this guy right here. Super excited about that one. Did not want anything to do with the side lights. That is just not for me. Landscaping, landscaping is also in here and so is security if that's something that you're into. But this site was really helpful in helping us to choose whether or not something was actually necessary for me in terms of um, the upgrade, the option manual. The option manual by itself has lots of big fancy words and lots of dollar signs and zeros and you know, 
it'll make it it'll make it seem like oh this is something that I need because it's expensive and it's really helpful but this site showed me what those upgrades actually look like and they helped me to decide whether or not this was actually something that I really needed um, so for example, you can see what the standard island trim is. There are island trim upgrades here if that was something that you wanted. Um, the spice rack pullout, which I ultimately did decide that I did not need. I forgot to mention that. I'm not going to use it in the manner that they show it here. I have another plan for my spices and I'm so excited. I did get the two drawer pots and pans, which you can see here. And then I also got the three drawer pots and pans, which you can see here. Our, our drawers will actually have hardware, but I cook a lot. And so it's helpful to have lots of different places to store. In the two drawer, two drawer pots and pans, I will actually be storing the pots and pans. And then in the three drawer pots and pans, I will be storing plates and other um, devices and tools that you, utensils and things that you eat with. Very excited about that. These are the rollout trays. I got four of these, as I said, um, in a taller cabinet. Did not get the trash pull out, very expensive. It costs $99 to do, to do this yourself. I've already purchased my trash pull out um, from Simple Human from the container store. I did really want these tilts, tilt out trays could not get those because of the apron sink because the apron sink actually eliminates the like this space right here where the tilt out sink tray would reside i did get the tray base cabinet these are removable so just in case you know you like them but then you find out you don't use them those are removable didn't want any frosted glass. I am not somebody who always wants to have to keep my cabinets in perfect order. Um, and I would if people could see into them. So I did not choose to go that way. Did get the under cabinet light strips. Did not do the crown molding. Um, yeah, but this is, so for example, you can just really see what everything looks like um, and make a decision that way. I found this amazingly helpful and I hope this was helpful for you as well. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and you guys have an amazing day. I'll be back next week with more on-site video as the home further develops and progresses and continues to be built. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'd love to answer them.